Okay, and good morning, everyone, and welcome to the regular meeting of the Township of North Kawartha. It is March 5th, and as folks will, will see, we are having a hybrid meeting, so it's a mixture of in-person folks that are here in, in our chambers today, as well as people that may be uh, joining online. And I just want to remind everybody um, that is in attendance here today, uh, we do record our meetings and we upload them to our YouTube channel. So they're available for public members to view at a later date and time, you know, whatever works for their schedule. But just so you know, any comments or any opinions that are expressed will be recorded and available for other folks to hear. Okay, and before we get into the business of our meeting, Council would like to acknowledge that we meet on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabeg, in particular our neighbours from Curve Lake and Kulworth Anishinaabe First Nations. We recognize and honour the original people of this place we call North Kulwartha. As duly elected representatives, we follow this Indigenous practice of acknowledgement to foster respectful deliberations, thoughtful collaboration, and wise decision making in our service to this community. Okay, and... I would ask at this point if any member has a hearing interest with any of the matters that are coming before us today. Seeing none, just a reminder, if you do have one, you need to declare it, okay, and uh, remove yourself from the proceedings. So, and then we do need to uh, adopt the agenda, but there are, um, is it just my change? Is that the only one? Bonnie, can you identify it, please? Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. It's just to um, adopt the agenda as amended to add under reports from boards and committees a verbal report from the mayor regarding the March 4th Upper Trent Watershed Water Management Partnership Committee meeting. Yeah, okay. All right, can I have a motion for the amended agenda? Moved by Colin, seconded by Ruthann. All those in favor? That agenda has been adopted. And without further ado, I will declare that we are going into a statutory public hearing for the purpose of hearing two zone amendment applications uh, before us today. Public hearings provide an opportunity for residents to ask for relief from the rules and regulations when it comes to, to planning and development. And it's also an opportunity for members of the public to provide comment on those requests for relief, either verbally or in writing. Um, and in order to be eligible for uh, an appeal of the decision made by council, you must have made a submission either verbally or in writing. And the appeal period begins 20 days from the date notice of the decision is posted, I believe. so. I think I've covered everything, and we have our planner joining us here this morning. Good morning, Forbes. Please uh, start us off with our first application. Thank you very, very much, Madam Mayor. Uh, the first application before you uh, this morning is ZA-01-24. It involves lands that are locally known as uh, 219 Winters Bay Road, that being uh, part of Lot 26, Concession 8, in Shandos Ward. The property is currently zoned Rural Exception 286, which permits um, development of the property within 500 meters of uh, an established uh, closed landfill site. Um, it did go through this zoning amendment in 2021. At this point in time, the application that's before council is to recognize a recreation camper cabin uh, that's 512 square feet in size that is uh, existing on the property, as well as um, an attached deck of 208 square feet and a small accessory shed that's currently on the property. Uh, records indicate that there were no building permits that were uh, requested for these structures. Um, and um, there's also recognition that the one uh, structure doesn't meet the 15 meter side yard setback. Council, the rural bylaw permits uh, recreation camps. However, it has a performance criteria of 50 acres and the subject property um, does not meet that requirement. It's only five acres in size. Um, and the recreation camp definition is a, a, a structure having a square footage uh, area of less than 1500 square meters erected for a temporary accommodation. The applicants have indicated that the, the cabin is on the property. It's used for personal use. It's not a hunt camp. Um, 
and the modest dwelling is is occupied on a seasonal basis um, and they've requested that they be permitted to have this modest dwelling on the property. Um, we have gone through the, the application. Our planning uh, report provides an analysis of the, the application with respect to the, the growth plan, uh, the provincial policy statement, the county official plan, um, and the elements of your zoning bylaw that I just highlighted. Our assessment is that this um, structure um, does not appear to be causing any land use conflicts. Um, it typically um, is a type of structure that is found in the rural area, albeit on larger properties. Um, and that um, it's our opinion that the application maintains the intent of the official plan. Um, I think that um, the provisions for recreation camps uh, or cabins in your bylaw is something that um, council may want to um, uh, explore when you're doing the update of your new zoning bylaw. Um, there is certainly a movement in Ontario these days to allow for smaller structures as, as permitted dwellings. Um, provided that they can be adequately serviced. And I don't think that there would be any question that uh, the five acre property has the ability to adequately service uh, this, this uh, recreation uh, camp. Um, my recommendation to council is to look at this favorably. Um, there is a draft zoning bylaw amendment before you. And uh, Madam Mayor, I'm happy to answer any questions you or uh, Council may have. Okay, all right, thank you very much, Forbes. And at this point, I would ask if the applicant or the applicant's representative is here and would like to add further comment to what our planner has presented. Uh, I don't see any need to add anything else to it then. Okay, perfect. Thank Can you. you identify yourself for the uh, answer, please? Brent Burks. Brent Burks, okay, all right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, okay, and well, I will now ask if there's any member of the public that is here to speak on this application, either in support of or in opposition to. This is your opportunity to do so. And I don't see anyone online that is indicating they want to speak on this application. There's no indication here in the gallery that anybody wants to speak. And can I confirm, uh, Forbes, that we did not receive any written comments on this? See there? Correct, <laughs> Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. All right, um, so I'm going to turn it over to uh, council members. Questions, comments, or perhaps you're prepared to make a motion. Who wants to start us off? Jim. Yeah, I'll move the recommendation okay. uh, to uh, accept amendment application ZA01-24. Okay, is there a seconder for that? Seconded by Ruthann. All those in favor? That has been approved. All right. Thank you, Thank very, you very much. much. All Thank right. You. Okay. So uh, we'll move on to the second zone. Oh, pardon me. We need to approve the bylaw. Could you please read that for us, Connie? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Being a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw 26, 2013, with respect to the lands described as part lot 26, concession 8, geographic area of Shandos County of Peterborough, roll number 01003188820. Okay. Motion to move by Jim Whalen, seconded by Jim O'Shea. All those in favor? Now, bylaw has now been approved as well. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now we will move on to the second application. Please go ahead, Forbes. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, this application that's before you is ZA 02 24. It's involving lands that are locally known as 150 uh, Fitch Lane Road. Uh, consisting of part of lot 24 concession 10 on Shandos. Uh, the property is uh, seasonal residential in nature. Um, this application that before is before you is a condition of consent uh, of application B38-22, which was granted provisional approval uh, by the County of Peterborough in July of 2022. 
the consent application involved the severing of uh, 0.32 acres of land uh, to be merged on title with abutting properties known as 138 uh, Fitch Lane Road. Uh, the result was uh, that the retained parcel, the parcel from which this land was taken, um, uh, ends up being 0 0.69 acres in size, which is less than the 1.2 acre minimum lot size required in the seasonal or shoreline residential zone. And so the, the nature of the application is simply to recognize uh, the reduced lot area of the retained parcel. I'm not going to go into the details of the analysis uh, that were done uh, for this zoning amendment, uh, save to say that uh, a lot of that analysis was, was reviewed and debated uh, at the time of consent in terms of uh, conformity with the uh, growth plan and the provincial policy statement and the county official plan. Um, and so uh, the application, uh, the only element of the application that needs uh, recognition is the minimum lot size of the retained parcel. Um, there were no comments of concern or objection that were received uh, prior to the writing of the report, uh, Madam Mayor. And uh, my recommendation to you today is to look at this application favorably. I'm happy to answer any questions that you or council may have. All right, thank you for that, Forbes. And uh, I would ask at this point if the applicant or the applicant's representative would like to speak on this um, application here, this amendment. Um, I don't see any indication that anybody, while well, we, he's gonna get his chance, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go through my, goal, my routine, right? So um, certainly if, uh, you know, what forms uh, our planners available to answer any questions. So now I'm going to ask if there's any member of the public that is here that would like to speak on this application, either in support of or in opposition to, this is your opportunity to do so. Okay. All right, I don't see anybody online um, that is indicating that they would like to speak on this. So I'm going to turn it over to members of council for questions, comments, or a motion. Who wants to start us off? Call on, please go ahead. I'll, I'll move that council approves on amendment application that a 0224. Okay. Is there a seconder? Jim Whalen will second that. All those in favor of the motion? That is approved. Okay. Thank you very much. And we need to do the bylaw, please, Tony. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It's a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw 26 2013 with respect to the lands described as part lot 24, concession 10, geographic area of Shandos, County of Peterborough, roll number 01000003244. Okay, all right. Can I have a mover for that bylaw, please? Moved by Ruthann, seconded by Jim Whalen. All those in favor? The bylaw has been approved. All right. Thanks, everyone. And uh, I will declare that we are out of statutory public hearing and we're going to go on with the rest of our business on the agenda. We do have a couple of deputations um, scheduled, one at 10 and one at 1030. And uh, I will certainly break before then, but you're welcome to stay or welcome to go. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's go on to the Peterborough County report. I'm gonna turn this over to Jim. Because you're the you're the I didn't attend the last meeting and uh, you did. I'm gonna tell them all about the garbage. <laughs> okay, guys, we um we had a um, big display about uh, why we should uh, go to a single garbage pickup uh, with the county, and uh, um, the motion was passed that uh, it comes to everybody, each individual council, and. Uh, each individual council would look at all of it and say yes or no. And uh, we say yes, we're into it. <clears throat> and they'll be taking it over. And uh, um, if we say no, then, you know, we do our own. That's it. So um, there's lots of pros and cons. And the only way that we thought it was fair was if you, if every, uh, council got a chance to say, hey, yes or hey, no on this thing. So it's, um, it's complicated. 
And um, Carol and I both have our own idea on it. I'm not going to say what it is, but uh, we're we're um, we have our own ideas, and we're we're going to um, um, be looking at it. Um, uh, hopefully next meeting, meeting uh, Alana. Yes. At the next meeting, and we'll have a full presentation that they gave us. Okay. Also the organics as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's another whole ball game. Um, yeah. So, um, and once again, you know us, we have our own opinions. <laughs> so, you know, we're, we'll see what you guys think. And then we'll make this in that. Yeah. Okay. Good or, good or bad, we'll make the decision, and that's what we go with. Um, also, uh, tomorrow morning, uh, there's a meeting um, about um, what do you call it? Uh, municipal Service Incorporated. Mun municipal Service. Is that right? So, yeah. you know, uh, um, somebody wants to build 100 houses, um, you know, we build them. We, we build them. A communal septic and water system, and uh, um, it's uh, there's grants coming up for it now. So uh, we think it's worth looking at. So we're going to go into a meeting tomorrow morning at eight thirty at the county uh, to take a look at that. Um, and we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Other than other than uh, that little bit, I think that's about it. That's everything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any questions or comments on that county report? If not, can I have a motion to receive the verbal report from the Deputy Mayor? Moved by Colin, seconded by Jim O'Shea. All those in favor? The verbal report has been received. Crow Valley Conservation Authority report. Colin, please. So the highlights of the meeting, one would be we finalized the 6.9% budget, which again, is higher than anybody wants, but given the specific increases this year, we are totally okay with. Mm -hmm. um, and the other one other highlight would be uh, we approved the revision of the Crow Valley policy manual so they're going to start going through um, trying to uh, focus on limiting the number of hearings and actually limiting the number of permits that need to be processed through Crow Valley um, it's going to be a big focus on docks and decks and that's something that I'm continually seeing pop up being a much larger headache than I think they need to be um, and then finally we have held the uh, open house um, I think the 27th when all the community center okay. so uh, next after our next meeting I'll be able to give you a full report back from um, how the crow thought that went and um, answer the most common questions yeah okay all right Jim Colin um, uh, I don't uh, a lot of people don't agree with the um, um, floodplain mapping as they're going to bring it forward uh, with the three feet difference that you know some people are saying is is in there, um, I've already talked to your um, chairman, and uh, he's looking into it. And I'd like you to look into it. Um, um, can we uh, um, um, what do you call it? Uh, peer review that because I think they're wrong. I can see what the options are for peer review of it. Would you believe? Yeah. Because, uh, and I know we have to pay for it. So we'll have to definitely come back here to see if the council is in agreement to pay for it. But uh, um, I, I think we're in for 30 years of grief if we don't do something here. Now's the time to do it. So um, if you would please, you know, follow up on that. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? Jim. Yeah, I actually agree with Jim. I figured the uh, data they used to resolve the issue was the original data, not new data. And they, I heard them state that they used um, the site at the uh, bridge at um, 620 at Shandos Lake, the, uh, the original um, shed there for measuring levels. And that they're going to move. So if they haven't moved that and they're working off of that one site as the primary source of uh, information, it, it's going to be wrong. 
Okay. Yeah. I'll check into that because I got something entirely different from the presentation that we received, and I thought that data wasn't part of what they were including. What they said about it's, it's four, what was it, 10 millimeters difference? <laughs> 10 centimeters for 10, yeah. 10 centimeters, yeah. whatever. <laughs> so it would certainly be nice to have a little more wiggle room, but it may be that the way to get more wiggle room is by taking the six meter buffer and saying, well, we're more comfortable with five now because we've gone through, done all the studies, and we're more confident in where that line should actually be. Um, so, one way or another, I think we can get a little more building area there. Okay. Same yeah. building area. The other point that caught my notice, um, they indicated that they only use 30 years of data, I believe, and it was supposed to reflect 100 years. So, yep. Yeah. All right. Well, Colin will look into it and get back to us. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate it, Colin. All right. Can I have a motion to receive uh, Colin's verbal update? Uh, moved by Ruthann, seconded by Jim O'Shea. All those in favor? That has been received and um, what are we at here? Adopting the minutes from the previous meeting of council. Connie, you said there was a change. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. So we were asking at that meeting. Yeah. And because I used a template, I actually have your name in there that you uh, recited the land acknowledgement and at the bottom. So I'd just like to have that replaced with Deputy Mayor Wellen's name. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, can I have a motion for the um, slightly amended uh, minutes, please? Moved by Ruthann, seconded by Colin. All those in favor? Those amended minutes have been adopted. And so I think we can go on and do a couple more things. The consent agenda. And Connie, I just did it sort of last minute. I just sent you an email. But um, we do have a request. I'd like to pull out number four and also... Um, the under number five, the resolution uh, regarding provincial cemetery management support request. Um, is there any other that we want to pull out? Okay, then can I have a motion for us to uh, receive the balance of the consent agenda? Moved by Jim O'Shea, seconded by Ruthann. All those in favor? So the balance has been received. Okay, so now let's get into the discussion. So the town of Lincoln has put forward a resolution regarding the urgent need to increase funding to libraries and museums in Ontario. And I would like council to consider supporting that because like they state, the funding from the province has been like set from 25 years ago. Clearly is not um, enough to really support libraries and libraries have to do a lot of creative stuff in order to uh, you know ensure that they've got uh, the funds they need to operate and provide their services. And they're vital. They're vital to the economic and social health and well-being of our communities. So uh, would anybody like to put in a motion to support Ruthann? Hello. OK, thank you. Jim Moshe, the two, our two library reps are going to do that. Also. And as a former chair, I'm going to third it. So all those in favor, <laughs> that has been supported. And then um, the cemetery management support request for Dan, you had asked for this to be pulled out. Did you want to speak to it? Yes, I just uh, briefly wanted to know where we had stood on that. I'd like to support this too, because I'm pretty sure we don't have any funds to maintain the ones that may be coming. And I know that Connie has looked into what we have for that. Okay, Connie, did you want to speak to that? <clears throat> so we don't have a lot of money for cemeteries. <clears throat> We have 10 cemeteries and many of them are pioneer cemeteries that aren't maintained. We do have some of the larger ones that are maintained, one active one, which is Clydesdale Cemetery and there's a board there mm -hmm. and they look after the regular maintenance. So there is um, a care and maintenance fund that the municipality has. I think there's a, approximately $700 in there, maybe 750. But of that money, you really can only use the interest for maintenance. So basically, <laughs> the only money we have to maintain the cemeteries is um, when the budget comes forward each year. And if staff identify some urgent needs like removal of a tree or a fence, um, money is then put in the budget to address that. So okay. it would be worth supporting, certainly. You mean the interest of $1.43 a year? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I think this is a good one too. Um, so, Ruthann, did you want to second before that motion to support? I do. Okay. Is there a seconder for that? Jim Whalen will second that. All those in favor? 
that has been supported as well. And I'm seeing we've got a few minutes. I'm going to call for a break and then we'll get started at 10 a.m. with our deputation. Okay. Yeah.